Hello there, welcome to the channel. Hopefully you welcome back. We've got some stuff we've been wanting to do once again with the Jackson Audio Modular Fuzz. And this time we're going to be getting in pretty deep, hopefully, with some of the trimmers in the back, the various different features. Now, this is the modern fuzz uh, module that we've got in here. We're not going to be playing with the octave circuit today. We've got things set up to pretty much um, uh, neutral. Our usual setting that we've been using, we've kept the volume the same and the fuzz level the same. And uh, all of the, the trimmers, uh, the, the EQ stuff, we've got set to neutral. Now, full disclosure, all I've done here is basically checked what uh, what I've got in the looper to play through. So um, we're not entirely sure how this is going to go, but um, I will show you what I think uh, each of these things does, and we will see if we can do a little bit of sound design with it. Um, so. This is our our uh, our sample. It goes from the low C on the contrabass clarinet, the lowest note, and it goes um, then up in tritones. So the C, uh, these are all uh, transposed pitches. So this will be concert B flat. Uh, it's on the clarinet. It's C, then the F sharp, then the C above that, then the F sharp above that, and then the B flat above that because it's right on the edge of the uh, the lowest register of the contrabass clarinet. So here's our sample. As you can probably see, we've got some of the dry signal mixed in there, as we played with before. That was the F sharp. There we go, and that's our B flat. So, um, what we're going to look at now is, in order to get a handle on these controls, we're going to look at the middle frequencies, which, you know, um, generally have the most effect on the quality of the sound. Uh, you can see that we've got the panel off the back there, and hopefully you can see what we've got here are the dip switches. These are for the, um, let me see if I can see. I did have a look in the manual. Um, if I remember correctly, there we go. The, I think, yes, these are the base ones. These are the um, treble ones, and these are the mids. Now, one of these things the mids one is also here. So the Q for the mids is here. Q is the range of the frequency. Um, and this is how much it's boosted um, here. This is which frequency is boosted. So we can change that range a little bit. And this is how broad that frequency is. OK, there we go. Let's just run through that one more time so that it's super clear. This is how much it's boosted. This is uh, which frequency is boosted uh, within the mids. And this is how broad that is. OK. So. 
what we're going to do very quickly is we're going to see the setting where this is. Okay, see the range of it. So right now it's there. Okay, it's a pretty broad range, but I do believe it was actually turned up all the way. There we go. So basically it was either at its broadest or its um, uh, its least broad. Okay, let's figure that out now. Let's boost the mids and um, which of the mids is being boosted is controlled there. Okay, we'll put it high just so that we can we can hear more clearly, hopefully. And let's see. Okay, so this is the higher mids. There we go, that's pretty clear, isn't it? That's how much it's boosted. That's which of the mids is boosted. And this will be the range. Okay, put it up high. And we'll see. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear that when it's um Okay, that 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 is actually at its maximum. Okay. So even with it at its maximum It's, it's still pretty clear that it's... Um... Yeah, that's very awesome. <laughs> okay. really quite amazing. I do like that very much. However, it does give us, give us a shit ton of options. Um, uh, okay. So, I think what I'm going to want with all of these guys is the um, the broadest possible boost. Like, I I don't see myself wanting to boost specific frequencies. So what I'm going to do is for all of the Q, I'm going to put it at its maximum. Yeah. This one is towards its maximum already, but now it's all the way up. This is the Q for the um, the base. And that's all the way up. Okay, so the Q is all the way up for all of them. Um, great. 
Let's play with that a little bit. Now that we know that the queue is up all the way, let's see about um, uh, the other thing is which frequency is being boosted. So let's see about the range of these guys. Let's turn them all up. Uh, I mean, no, let's do them one at a time. Um, we just did mids. We're going to turn that boost down. Um, we're going to boost the treble now. Okay, let's see how that sounds. treble boosted let's change the uh, the range oh so which frequency oh wow that's fucking awesome sci-fi sounds with that. Yeah, I mean, obviously... We're, we're not gonna want that all the time. But in terms of which frequencies get boosted, I think that we should be able to choose something. I mean, we're not wanting it too obvious, obviously. Well, that's given us a good idea for, for the, the treble there. That's awesome. Now the bass. We've got the Q turned all the way up, the range that's being boosted. So now um, we're going to choose which bass frequency is being boosted. So we'll boost that for ourselves. Uh, well, let's hear that first. Less obvious, or not, maybe. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, this is going to be awesome. Some of that punch is just lovely. bass drum and all that, obviously, but, okay. Okay. So we've got the Q set to max. Let's see how this goes with the, the frequency choice. Ooh, all the way down is very tasty. Okay. Took us all 
too much, huh? Okay, it's that guy there. That's the problem. Okay. Is that the problem? Okay, it's something to do with the the fuzz pedal. Okay, let's see if turning that down is Oh, okay, there we go. It's just everything was getting a little bit too intense there. Here we go. Yeah. Ooh. I mean, that's very cool, but... Be tuned in so precisely. <laughs> Messing with the cue just a little there. Let's have a bit of fun where we. It's quite interesting. Yeah. Okay, so definitely getting a strong idea of what's going on here, I feel. We can find a frequency that we like. Uh, for example, when we're designing a sound I'm talking about here. Find a frequency that we like. Start with the cue turned all the way up. And then if we want to kind of like bring it down once we've found the frequency that we like, we can always do that, like if we want to be more specific about it. But it strikes me that, that as far as cue goes, we want cue all the way up. Um, and then, yeah, it's about playing with the frequencies. Okay, so that was really interesting and fun. Um, hopefully that's given you a good idea of what the different, uh, what the different um, trimmers do there. And it's certainly given me a great idea of the possibilities um, for sound design here. I'd like the sounds, the three sounds that we've got with the three different modules, uh, I'm already quite happy with, but the idea that we could trim these to like a really high degree of accuracy it is very appealing to me. Um, I wonder if we want to try something with the higher range of the clarinet quickly? Yeah, let's go through that a little more quickly. Uh, I'll do a similar kind of thing, but uh, this is with the higher range of the clarinet. So here's our sample.
So boost the mids. And then which mids are getting boosted? Yeah, okay. And there we go. Uh, by the way, worth noting that um, the, the, the main EQ um, uh, levels, it's plus or minus 20 dB. Um, and there is on the pedal like a nice little thing that shows you where the middle is. A uh, nice little feeling in the switch. Haptics, I believe they call that. Is that right? Anyway. So that's the mids. Let's stick with this same sample. And let's play with the treble. And it's boosted quite a bit there. And the treble is here. Good to make that comparison. Like, for example, compare it with the other sample. Like, like yeah, we wouldn't want it up there, but. There we go, that's. Seems about right. There, maybe just a little bit lower. There we go. Okay, and now the the higher sample. Let's see how that compares. It's, yeah, still maybe a little bit too much buzz. So it is worth comparing different samples. Okay, let's now uh, do that with the uh, bass as we were doing before. I mean, it's worth noticing. <laughs> worth noting that the bottom range of the contrabass clarinet is not bass; it's sub bass. So all of this is going to be affecting. Be it's going to be having a bigger effect on on higher register stuff. Um, I mean, not that's not to say that it's going to be having a a small effect on the low stuff because of course the low notes contain the higher um, the higher um, overtones but yeah it, it's just worth making a comparison with all of these different um, uh, different registers okay one more little got that yeah that's okay and comparing that 
with the uh, the lower register. That's pretty tasty. Okay. Um, there we go. So, uh, very interesting stuff. We will definitely be doing some more sound design with this. Uh, what I would love to have are uh, for each of the the modules that I'm working with the um, uh, or at least the three that I, I've I've become most um, enamored with this one the modern fuzz and the fuzz page mark two and the goat head. Um, I'd like to have a, maybe three settings for each with the mids in a few different positions. And it seems like we're going to have the Q set to the widest range possible for all of them, unless we, we, we have a specific something in mind. But it would be awesome to have three for each module. Fuzz, uh, sorry, with the mids low, mid, and high. But we'll see. We'll see what we come up with. Um, there we go. That's been a look at some of the trimmers on the Jackson Audio Modular Fuzz. Thank you for sticking around. Hope that's been interesting. And onwards and upwards. <laughs>